Hello folks, and welcome to our show, Medicine for Dummies. Today we have our guest Dr. Asmaticus here to tell us about the basics regarding spirometry, and to help us understand the differences between obstructive and restrictive pulmonary diseases. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Jimmy. I have really been looking forward to it. Anytime, Dr. Asmaticus. So let's just start with the basics. What is spirometry? Spirometry is an easy, non-invasive way of measuring the amount of air moving into and out of the lungs. It is important because it is used in the diagnosis, monitoring, and staging of certain obstructive and restrictive diseases like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Thoughts quite interesting, doctor. So what exactly is spirometry measuring? Well, it measures a variety of different lung volumes and capacities. For example, the tidal volume is a measure of the volume of air inhaled and exhaled with a normal breath at rest. We also have the inspiratory reserve volume. This is the amount of air that can be inhaled after a normal inspiration. Very similarly, spirometry can measure the expiratory reserve which is the amount of air that can be exhaled after a normal expiration. Then we have the measure of vital capacity. This is the total amount of air that can be exhaled following a maximal inhalation. When talking about lung capacities, it is also important to note that the residual volume is the air left in the lungs after a maximal expiration which cannot be exhaled due to the limitations of the lungs' elasticity. This one cannot be measured by spirometry. However, when you add the residual volume to the vital capacity, you get the total lung capacity which is an important measurement. You guys still with me? Sorry for the overload of information. I think they are still here, doctor. It's quite obvious how excited you get about this subject. Yes, it is one of my favorite topics. So you were saying that spirometry was important in the diagnosis, staging, and monitoring of different obstructive and restrictive diseases. Can you expand upon that a bit further? Yes. We have a couple more lung capacities that I must tell you about in order for this to make sense. The first one is the forced vital capacity. This is exactly like the vital capacity, except for the fact that it is performed as rapidly and forcefully as possible. Secondly, we have the forced expiratory volume in one second. This is the volume of air that has expired forcefully in one second. When we take the value of the forced expiratory volume in one second, and divide it by the forced vital capacity, we get a measurement that is valuable in determining whether the patient has a restrictive or an obstructive disease. A normal ratio of these measurements is 70%, but this value becomes lower in obstructive disease. In restrictive disease, this value appears to be either normal or slightly increased. Thanks for that wonderful explanation. I think our audience is getting a little tired of spirometry, so we better move on. So can you tell us a little more about what an obstructive disease is, and how it varies from restrictive diseases? Examples of obstructive diseases consist of asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. These patients have a normal lung volume. However, they have increased airway resistance, causing them difficulty in forcefully expiring their air at a normal rate. So while obstructive disease patients have normal lung volumes, Patients with restrictive diseases have had reduced lung volumes with no difficulty in expiring their air. Examples of restrictive diseases include pleural effusions and neumothoraxes. Oh, I see. So you're saying obstructive diseases obstruct the airway, while restrictive diseases restrict the lung capacity? Yes, it really is that easy. Wow. I think I get it. I think it is now time for a quick game of Stump the Host. This is where Dr. Asmaticus will ask me a few questions in which I must apply the concepts learned in order to come to the answer. All right, Jimmy. Hum. Here is your first question. A patient comes in with an obstructive disease such as asthma and is asked to take a spirometry test. His forced expiratory volume in one second is divided by his forced vital capacity. Will this ratio be smaller, the same, or greater than in a normal patient? Well, asthma involves the constriction of the bronchi making it hard to expire the volume of air in the patient's lung. It does not affect the lung capacity. That must mean that asthma is an obstructive disease. If asthma is an obstructive disease, 
then the forced expiratory volume in one second will decrease, while the forced vital capacity will remain the same. Oh, I got it. That means that asthma patient will result in a ratio that is smaller than in a normal patient. That is correct. Oh, I'm sorry guys. That buzzer means we are out of time. But let's hear it for our guest Dr. Asthmaticus. Thank you all for joining us for the show today.